Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to share my favorite image trace settings for vectorizing your lettering in Adobe Illustrator. So vectorizing your lettering can be really powerful because suddenly you have a digital form of your lettering. So if you ever lose it or lose track of it, you always have a digital copy. Plus, once you vectorize it, it can be infinitely rescalable. So you can increase the size, decrease the size, whatever you need to do, and the resolution will be the same. You won't lose quality when you do that. That. So vectorization is super powerful and really handy, especially if you plan on reusing your lettering numerous times. You also need to vectorize your lettering if you ever want to get into font making and creating your own font. Make sure you hit the link in the video description for more on that, but you have to vectorize your lettering if you'd like to convert it into an OTF or TTF formatted font. So all that said, I want to share my exact trace settings for vectorization of lettering. It's been really reliable for me with these settings. I use them all the time. So I want to share what I use. This is especially helpful if you have textured lettering. You can retain a lot of that texture and try and replicate exactly what the lettering looks like. So this is just an image. I made this in Procreate. And then you can either email it to yourself or you can airdrop it if you're on a Mac like I am. And you can just bring it onto your computer and now I'm in Illustrator with it. So this is just a rasterized image right now because Procreate is pixel based and we want to get this to be vector based. The one thing you want to remember when you're creating your initial lettering is you want it to be black and white so you have the highest amount of contrast so you can pick up all that detail. If you create your lettering on paper, I recommend bringing it into Photoshop first and increasing your brightness and contrast just to increase more of those details. And when you scan in, you want to be scanning in at at least 300 dpi. Okay, so from here with this selected in order to trace it, you're just going to come up here and hit image trace and this will run a default trace. So Illustrator has some settings already. It just runs it and you can see how it doesn't really look like the original at all right now. But luckily we have a trace panel, which if you click on this little icon right up here, you want to open it up and you have a bunch more settings that you can tweak before you finalize the trace. So if you toggle this little advanced arrow right here down, you can see all the extra options we have to kind of tweak this and get it looking more like the original. So these are the default settings for the image trace. And for the threshold, I usually increase this up to 150 for textured fonts. If you're not getting the results you'd like, just increase it a little bit more and you can grab more of the texture around the edges. Typically what happens when you increase your threshold is your letters get a little bit thicker or bolder. So I'm going to increase this to 150 and then you can just click anywhere and it will run those changes. And you want to make sure that preview is checked down here so you can see a live updated version of your lettering. If you don't see enough of a change that you're happy with, you can increase it a bit more. If I jump this up to 200 we can see some changes happen you can see all the letters got a little thicker and this edge got a little rougher so I'm bringing in a little bit more of that texture so this happens to work a little bit better for this example but I always start at 150 and then I move from there depending on the type of lettering that I have so for paths this is the outline around your lettering basically your stroke the edges that go around all of your letters so the lower your paths you can see down here we've got anchors and paths the lower these numbers are the smaller your file will be but it's okay to increase these just be aware that as you increase this you're adding more points along your path because you're bringing in more of those details so your file will slowly get larger okay so for paths we're going to go up to 75 right here and then just click anywhere and see if you're happy with those changes if you don't really notice any changes you can tweak it a little bit more I'm going to go up to 85 and just kind of see just watch your edges right there it looks like these got a little bit rougher than before and if you like that look, keep moving with it. If you prefer it a little smoother, just reduce the percentage right here. For corners, I typically keep this just at 75. You can play around with that as well, but I have good luck with just leaving it as the default. And then for noise, I like keeping this between five and 10 pixels. This also brings in a lot more of that detail. So if I bring this down to five, let's see what we get right here. You can see I got a lot more detail, especially up here along this edge. Let's bring it down to two and see if we get even more. It looks about the same, so I'm just going to leave it at five right here. But just keep in mind, if you have really textured lettering, you're going to want settings similar to these. If you have smoother lettering, then you'll want to reduce these just slightly. So my baseline for all of these, I typically start with a threshold at 150, paths at 75, I leave corners at 75%, and my noise, I usually vary between 
5 and 10 pixels. Okay, so the last thing I want to tell you to do is to make sure that ignore white is unchecked. A lot of people recommend checking this, but it's not a good idea when you're working with lettering. And the reason for that is with lettering, you have these closed shapes right here. You can see it in the H, the E, the L's, and the O right here. And although it, it will remove the white out of here, it will leave empty shapes that are unfilled right here on top of having the regular shapes of your lettering. And if you're trying to alter anything later on, you're going to get these extra unnecessary shapes right there that can lead to confusion and make it a lot more difficult to edit your lettering later on. So I'm going to show you a really, really easy workaround for that. But my recommendation is to never, ever, ever check a nor white on the trace setting when you're working with lettering. Okay, when you're happy with everything, you're gonna have to hit expand up here in order to commit these changes. So I'll just hit expand and now it's vectorized. You can see I don't have this bounding box around my lettering anymore. I don't have the lines through this box. And the next thing you wanna do is ungroup your lettering. So Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC and then you're just gonna click anywhere and then you're gonna hit Y for your magic wand tool and then you're just gonna click wherever there's white. So I'm just going to click right here and this will select all the white that was part of the original lettering and then you're just going to want to hit delete and now you're all set. You don't have any weird shapes or empty shapes anywhere. All you have is your lettering. If I go into outline mode, command Y or control Y on a PC, you can see all that's left is this beautiful lettering. So I'm going to hit command Y or control Y on a PC to exit outline mode and there you go. So this is the vectorized version of the original lettering and once again you can tweak those settings based on your lettering and what you prefer for your final vectorized outcome but those settings always are a great starting point for me and then I just work from there. If you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my blog every hyphen tuesday.com for even more design and lettering tutorials as well as how to convert your lettering into a workable sellable font. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.